Welcome to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in the next half hour, Council Member Sydney Katz gets a huge honor. And then we're shining a light on Tobytown during Black History Month. And later, how the 480 Club is giving Montgomery County students a leg up in the classroom and on the field. But first, request granted. The Montgomery County Board of Education has approved a $2.52 billion operating budget for fiscal year 2018. MCPS TV has more in this report. Where you spend your money shows what you believe in. And with that statement, the Montgomery County Board of Education voted to approve an operating budget request for fiscal year 2018. The $2.52 billion budget reflects Board of Education priorities, especially toward improving student outcomes and closing opportunity gaps found among some students. It also reflects the fact that the overall student population is increasing. 40% of all new students in the state of Maryland attend Montgomery County Public Schools. The budget also includes $11 million for strategic accelerators. There are efforts like Equal Opportunity Schools and ACES that help move students toward college. There are efforts around career and technology pathways and apprenticeships that help students move toward the world of work. There are efforts in elementary and middle school that help us, like the data uh, systems, that help us better know our students reading at, above, or below grade level right now so we can change that today. Other accelerators include expanding achievement and leadership-focused extracurricular programs for underrepresented students and increasing opportunities for these students to participate in rigorous coursework. The budget reflects feedback from school communities and adds back positions for 35 reading initiative teachers. It also proposes to eliminate the extracurricular activity fee for all students. We are at, a, uh, I think, a crucial point in the uh, life of, of this county and, uh, and, and our school system. Uh, we, we have a lot of successes, but we also have a lot of challenges, and we feel this budget uh, will go a long way to, uh, to addressing that. The board's budget will be submitted to the county executive and then to the county council, who will vote on it in May. The Board of Education now submits its budget request to the county executive and the county council for review. Ensuring that the county is meeting the needs of its students is a top priority. That's why education and county government leaders are holding five education forums to discuss school funding. The first one was just held on February 15th at Northwest High School in Germantown. Now, with four more to go, Council Member Craig Rice explains why it's important to hold these forums at various locations. We have to operate in a way in which we're uh, collaborative because that's the only way we'll be able to work through some of these problems. Over the course of the next two months, we're going to have five education budget forum meetings throughout the county. And I'm really excited about giving the opportunity for folks to be able to come in all across the county and weigh in about the things that are going to be important to them in this MCPS budget. We came together to really talk about uh, education and most importantly education funding and why it was important. For well, it's important for people to participate in uh, these education budget forums because without your voice uh, we don't know what's working and what isn't. Uh, we can use our own anecdotal information but it really is important for people that are in it. As the parent of two children, one that's about to go into middle school and one in high school, uh, there are certain things that I know that I hear from my children uh, that are going well and some things that we can fix and do better. And so having those those uh, culmination of voices together talking about those kinds of issues just help us to shape a much better budget for MCPS. We continue to grow here in Montgomery County. Always the question is, are we doing enough when it comes to class size? We continue to, and we made great strides last year as a part of this year's superintendent's budget. He's proposed adding additional teachers as well as additional counselors, PPWs, uh, people personnel workers. So from that perspective, I think we're still headed in the right direction. We spent a lot of money in Montgomery County County on education. Two and a half billion dollars each year goes to make sure that each and every one of you are successful. I want our students to understand how important they are, how much investment this county puts in, and also that we expect to see great things out of them. We need to make sure that our school system from K through J uh, can provide uh, all of the opportunities uh, for all of our kids. Here is a list of the upcoming meetings. For further information, please contact Councilmember Rice's office via email or by calling 
7955. There's a new portrait hanging in the Hall of Mayors at Gaithersburg City Hall. My MC Media's Sonia Burke has the story. <laughs> Montgomery County Council member Sidney Katz helps unveil his portrait at Gaithersburg City Hall, where he was inducted into the Hall of Mayors. You know, my mother used to always say, whenever there's a picture of me, she used to look at me and say, you know, Sydney, unfortunately, it looks like you. And, that's, <laughs> and my own mother would say that. So. All joking aside, the city of Gaithersburg is council member Katz's hometown. He grew up in the city and served on the planning commission, the city council, and as mayor. So this honor means a lot. It really is an honor to serve Gaithersburg in any way that we can serve, serve the city. But it's also been a great honor for me to be the mayor of Gaithersburg. The Hall of Mayors, which includes portraits dating back to 1878, leads to the council chambers a room the former city mayor knows well. For 36 years I drove to this building every Monday night, pretty much every Monday night, to be uh, a part of the, the city government. Now a county council member, his staff and two of his council colleagues joined him at the induction ceremony where they surprised him with their certificate of appreciation. The formal portrait now hangs in the Hall of Mayors as a visual record of the former mayor's service and lasting legacy. It is an honor and it's, it's really, uh, it, uh, it does bring back a lot of good memories. In Gaithersburg, I'm Sonia Burke for County Report This Week. Coming up on County Report This Week, the county executive is taking nominations for the Montgomery Serves Awards and learning how plants can offer solutions to climate change. More on that when we come back. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. In Montgomery County, we have a goal to reduce waste and recycle 70% of all waste by 2020. By recycling and reducing waste, we save natural resources and make our community even better. So recycle at home, work, school, everywhere, and keep recycling going. For more information, call the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash recycling. Keep it going. Recycle more now. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Anquanette Crosby. At a recent briefing with reporters, County Council President Roger Berliner talked about the Bethesda downtown plan and its impact on school capacity. But I do feel that we bear a special responsibility to address this issue when we make conscious decisions that we are going to grow in a particular part of our county in which school capacity is in fact an issue. I think the elementary school situation is basically doable and the middle school situation is basically doable. The high school situation is going to be tough. BCC is sitting on the smallest plot of land of any high school in our county and its capacity to grow is limited. So we are going to have to work real hard with our school system to come up with answers. It's part of the reason why I am going to be supporting staging in the Bethesda plan because we really do need to make sure that this 20 to 30 year plan that we are in a position to put a stop button on or a pause button on if in fact we are not taking care of our infrastructure needs. It takes a special person to give of their time to help others. So if you know of a volunteer in the county that's doing just that, well, here's a chance for them to be recognized. The Montgomery County Executive is now accepting nominations for two awards. These are the Neil Potter Path of Achievement and Montgomery Serves Awards. Now these awards honor outstanding community leaders and dedicated volunteers. 
residents are encouraged to submit nominations of individuals, businesses, and community groups. The nominating form can be found at MontgomeryServes.org. The deadline is fast approaching. It's Friday, February 24th by 5 p.m. The ceremony will take place at Imagination Stage in Bethesda on Monday, April 24th. Black Hill Regional Park hosted its annual Waterfowl Festival. Whether you're into ducks, geese, swan, or even if you know nothing about waterfowl, well, there's something for everyone to enjoy. Crystal Park has more. Waterfowl enthusiasts got a treat at the fourth annual Waterfowl Festival held at Black Hill Regional Park in Boyds, Maryland. From professional duck carving demonstrations to tons of crafts for kids and even a duck dissection, there was something for every waterfowl lover. Whether you're an expert duck hunter or simply a nature enthusiast, there was something new to learn at the fourth annual Waterfowl Festival held at Black Hill Regional Park's Nature Center in Boyds, Maryland. Attendees were treated to watching a master in action. Don Bedell has been carving birds and duck decoys since he was 13 years old. He was an apprentice of the renowned Ward Brothers, who are credited for establishing a unique standard of realism and artistic expression. Both Bedell and the Ward Brothers are from Maryland's eastern shore. Once an avid duck hunter himself, Bedell says years of carving the creatures made him think twice about killing them. What am I doing shooting these beautiful things? These are just incredible creatures. So I, I gave away my guns and I, I quit doing it. And, and I feel like now this is atonement <laughs> for those years of hunting. Amateur future duck carvers could try their hand at the craft too. Kids practice carving their own decoys using a bar of soap. Other craft tables featured paint and feathers for children to create their own waterfowl masterpieces. I learned about like the body parts of birds, like the hearts and wings. The Black Hill Regional Park Nature Center regularly partners with local schools and community organizations to spread more information about Maryland's wildlife. We want the people that come here, even just to visit, to become stewards for public and wild lands. In Boyds, I'm Crystal Park for County Report This Week. If you're curious about how climate change and plants work hand in hand, then this is the event for you. Brookside Gardens will hold its annual Green Matters Symposium. It takes place on Friday, February 24th. The event will be held from 8.30 a.m. until 4 p.m. It's called Plant Solutions in the Age of Climate Change. Due to popular demand, the event has been moved to the Civic Center in downtown Silver Spring. There is a $99 fee to attend. You can register at activemontgomery.org. For more information and a list of the speakers, go to Brookside Gardens org. Montgomery County is mourning the loss of Emily Crown. Keeping children safe was Crown's lifetime passion. For over 36 years, Crown was a tireless advocate and champion for children's safety. She was the architect of Montgomery County's nationally acclaimed car seat program. She was also instrumental at the legislative level helping to pass Maryland's booster seat law and was considered one of the leading authorities on child passenger safety across the country. Donations in memory of Emily Crown may be made to save kids worldwide. Coming up on County Report this week, get on board the bus tour that retraces the steps of civil rights heroes. Plus, how Rockville is making sure it's a more inclusive place to live and work. More about the Town Hall on diversity. Those stories and more when we come back. Get to MC and we'll get you going. Mark your calendars. The Montgomery County Green Fest is coming up and you don't want to miss it. Green Fest promises to be a fun-filled day of entertainment, community, and learning. Enjoy live music and fun and games for kids, 
learn how to green your home and neighborhood, watch the latest environmental short films, attend a DIY workshop, and explore exhibitor booths. GreenFest has activities for all ages and interests. Make sure you stop by and explore your path to a greener life. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. February is Black History Month, and here in Montgomery County, there are more than 40 African-American communities. One of those communities is Tobytown, which still faces its share of struggles, as Susan Kennedy explains. What might not be so apparent when you travel Potomac's River Road is the rich black history that's a part of Montgomery County. Tucked away at the intersection of River and Pennyfield Lock Road is the community of Tobytown. Settled in 1875 by freed slaves, Tobytown is named after Tobias Martin. At that time, most residents of Tobytown worked on local farms. Cause it was a long, long yeah, time yeah. ago. Phyllis Shaw has spent most of her life in Tobytown. She says the original land for Tobytown was given to a group of her relatives who worked on a plantation. And the owner left so much land. From what I give, it was like 93 acres of land. Wow. And they left it to them. And um, they, you know, and, and piece by piece, they lost it uh, for silly reasons. When Shaw was a young girl, Tobytown residents lived in small, crowded shacks. The community shared one toilet and one well, and wood-burning stoves were the only source of heat. In 1972, the Housing Opportunities Commission bought the land and replaced the original 15 homes with today's 26 homes that stand on the property still today. Those houses signified hope that the hard times for Tobytown would be in the past. So there's a lot of history here. There's a whole lot of history here that haven't been told that people don't know about. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like I say, it's, it's better because we don't have to go outside to use the bathroom no more. We got, we got toilets now. And after decades of fighting for public transportation, the county council recently approved funding for ride on bus service for Tobytown residents. I love the bus. I feel like we're connected to the world almost now. Like we're not isolated anymore because at, at first it feels, it feels isolated. Once you're here, it's like you're here. The only way out was the school bus, but now there's a ride on bus. It's, it's really nice. Being able to provide opportunities for the next generation is the most important thing to residents like Wilson and Shaw, and also to hold on to this slice of history that played a significant role in shaping Montgomery County. Looking at the younger people, they don't know the history of the place. After we gone out of here, that's it. But you know what? I had to get to a place where I say, it's up to you, God up to God. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. Rockville's multicultural community made their voices heard during a recent town hall meeting on diversity. And Rockville leaders were there to listen. Rockville 11's Kathy Dantzler has more. It really was to reaffirm that Rockville is still the same welcoming place that it has been. And that started Rockville's very first town hall meeting on diversity. It was a chance for the mayor and council to be face to face with the citizens that depend on them. And this town hall took a more traditional approach. Seven circles with an elected official or city employee and residents to discuss two questions that are designed to open up a conversation. As we continue to um, merge together to blend as a blended America, then it's good for us to come together and see what people are thinking and where there are ways that we could do things better and ways that we can all, you know, learn together. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking building bridges. Rockville believes in the strength of its diverse community and that there are special things that need to be done to make sure everyone feels included. And the first step is to listen. I hope that we as elected officials will do more listening because it's very important that people know that we are there for them and that we want to hear if they're having an issue, if there's something that they feel that we can do 
as a mayor and council, as an elected person, then we want to step up to the plate and do what we can for our citizens. Residents welcomed the conversation about how to make the city more inclusive, not just culturally, but generational and economically. We also discussed the encouragement of younger people um, participating in their local government. We've discussed internships, summer programs that can be a great help. We talked about housing and also spending of public dollars equitably across the entire city. This is very casual. It's information gathering. We're looking to have uh, circles of conversation and we'll gather all the information. The city will gather all the information together, put it together into in a proper report and format of people's concerns, uh, their issues, what they think is good, and then get a report back to the, to the public and hopefully have some more uh, meaningful dialogue. And you can sign up to find out more about what happened at this town hall and more about the city's diversity initiatives by heading to rockvillemd.gov slash diversity town hall. For County Report This Week, I'm Kathy Dantzler. This may be the ultimate history tour about the civil rights movement. It's a bus tour that retraces the steps of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and other civil rights heroes. The Montgomery County Office of Human Rights is hosting a civil rights educational freedom experience. The bus tour takes place from April 8th through the 16th. The cost of the trip and other info can be found on the website. Education from the very time we step onto the bus to the time, in fact, we exit the bus. Uh, along the way, we'll be looking at uh, documentaries, and, and we, as a fact, we have also partnered with uh, uh, the uh, library system here uh, in Montgomery County. Uh, there'll be a reading list available to those who go along with us to read up beforehand about what they're going to see and where they're going to be visiting and so forth. So they'll be real clear about uh, the importance of those actual steps, stops along the way. For more information, visit MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash human rights. Coming up next on County Report This Week, teaching students about athletics and academics, we learn more about the 480 Club. And we meet our Pet of the Week. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Down here. You illegally passed the stop school bus. I'm placing you in timeout. And this timeout means big fines, plus you really could have hurt somebody. That's why school buses are being equipped with video cameras to help kids like me stay safe. So respect the bus. Here's your chance to save money and help the environment. Bring your reusable bag when you shop and you'll save five cents for every store bag you don't need. Retailers in Montgomery County charge five cents for the plastic or paper bags they provide. Why? Because plastic bags are the biggest single source of stream and waterway litter, causing pollution and flooding. And every year, Montgomery County spends $3 million on cleanup. So do yourself and the environment a favor. Bring your reusable bag when you shop. You'll fight litter and keep the change. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm on Quinette Crosby. A Watkins Mill High School alum is using his past experiences to train students to be better athletes on and off the football field. My MC Media's Mitty Hicks has the story. All right, we're going to push. We're getting shape ready to go. We ain't got a lot of time, all right? Inspired by the lack of resources he had when growing up, Joseph Hooks founded the 480 Club. The 480 Club is an off-season indoor conditioning program that teaches Montgomery County youth to be better athletes and more. Go. Guy Gingerella is a parent to a 480 Club participant and has witnessed firsthand his son's improvements at home. It's teaching him discipline, it teaches him structure, it teaches him um, to give your best effort. When you get your best effort, you get the best results. You just have to fight through it. Like if something is hard, you go through it. You become a humble and you have to think more about it than you would with something else. Most of these students come from the Montgomery Village Sports Association, which is the same place Hooks got his football start. I'm doing this because when I grew up, we didn't have the opportunity. We didn't have an indoor facility like this at Soldier Fit where we could train. Uh, we had to stay outside when the snow or, you know, had to stay busy. So I wanted to provide a way that 
kids, just like in the South or um, anywhere else, could train all year round to get better. But the lack of resources didn't stop Hooks from earning a spot on Shepherd University's football team after graduating and playing football at Watkins Mill High School. He went on to play for the American Indoor Football League, but when he didn't make the Washington Redskins, Hooks found himself looking for a new way to stay in the game. All right, let's go. Now, Hooks is using his lessons and experiences from the past to teach young athletes how to get ahead, like his past trainee, Derek Tangelo, who will be heading to Duke University this fall to play football. Well, when I first started playing for Coach Hooks, I didn't really know how to play football, so Coach Hooks kind of like walked me through the whole game of football. He taught me a mentality. He taught me not to let anybody outwork you. He just taught me like rules of the game, and he worked with me on becoming a man and becoming a better football player. So. Without Coach Hooks, I don't think I'll be playing football. It's not a program. It's like helps you out with your, with your family, like teach you brotherhood, and like teach you stuff on school, out of school. Um, this program is really to provide the next student athlete that might be like Derek Tangelo going to Duke. Um, they can go to public school or private school, but we just want to give them the opportunity to say, you keep working, the sky's the limit. In Gaithersburg, I'm Mitty Hicks for County Report oh, This oh, Week. Oh, oh, He's ESPN's top baseball analyst. Tim Kurgeon recently paid a visit to the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. MCTV's Michael Brown tells us more in this report. Kurgeon has been the top baseball commentator at ESPN for over 20 years, and he came to the college to talk about his new book, I'm Fascinated by Sacrifice Flies. Before we get started, ju just a word about this book. This is just like the last book I wrote eight years ago, only all the stories are different. The last book was called, Is This a Great Game or What? And it was uh, just like this one, it's a Valentine for baseball fans. He also you know, talked I mean, about why he believes baseball is the best game. For just all the strange coincidences that come up in baseball, it's the best game because of all the people that I meet along the way. This game is really hard to play. Mm -hmm. That's why it's the best game. And in order to play such a difficult game, you have to be unbelievably great. And I could tell you hours of stories about the great players that I've covered from Cal Ripken to Greg Maddox on down. He also took audience questions about speeding up the pace of play. Well, this is a really tricky question. Average time of game is up five minutes last year to three hours and three minutes, okay? There's a little bit too much dead time in the game. I'll give you that. We are at a time in baseball with the greatest collection of young players I've ever seen. And suddenly the game is, is galactically boring for everyone. The games take way too long. I'm sorry, I'm not seeing it. And if there was any one player in history, he'd drop everything to watch. I would say there were about 20 answers to that, I'm going to give you one. Pedro Martinez, 1999, 2000. And the last question of the event was the Dream World Series he'd love to see. The 27 Yankees, the greatest team of all time, against the 75 Reds, the greatest team in National League history. For County Report this week from Montgomery College, I'm Michael Brown. I would love now it's time to meet our pet of the week. Kathy Stanhope joins us from the Montgomery County Animal Services and Adoption Center with more. Kathy? This is Jasmine. She's just about two years old. She's a spayed female and she is a cross between a bulldog and an American Staffordshire Terrier. She is not for the first time a dog owner because she's very, very high energy. But for every ounce of that energy, she has a pound of love. She is a sweet, sweet thing that just wants a home. Please give us a call at 240-773-5900 or visit us on the web for more information about Jasmine at montgomerycountymd.gov slash ASD. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. We leave you this week with images from the seventh annual Midwinter Play Day in Tacoma Park. Folks enjoyed everything from air hockey to Simon Says with Congressman Jamie Raskin. Looks like a lot of fun. I'm Anquanette Crosby. Thank you for watching.